In this update on my app, Creator View, we're gonna talk downloads and sales numbers, how well are my early customers retaining, gonna give a product update and what I've been building the past few weeks, and I brought on some help. To dive into the downloads and sales numbers, let's head on over to the computer. Here are the lifetime download numbers for Creator View. We launched on about February 15th, and here we are on September 21st, and as you can see, 760 downloads. Now, my downloads, I can't really put stock into that because I would say 80% of my downloads are you all, my viewers or developers that follow me that just wanna check out the app. They're not like really YouTubers. And you can tell that because all these spikes, anytime I get a spike, it's when I release one of these videos and people like check out the app. <laughs> so I consider my actual download numbers like this lull in between, which as you can see, as I'm going over it, I don't know, three to five to seven, six, somewhere in the single digit downloads per day. So that's what we're working with. But again, disclaimer, I've done no marketing aside from these videos, but really it's all developers watching these videos, not YouTubers. So pretty much no marketing, that's the download numbers. Okay, let's talk revenue and subscription stuff. For that, we go to the Revenue Cat dashboard. Here's my overview, as you can see. Active trials, two. So what that means is right, right now there's two people in that free trial that I can hopefully convert. One active subscription, that's me, <laughs> so kind of cheating. Uh, MRR, $10 a month. Again, that's me. Revenue, $10. This is all in the last 28 days, by the way. So this is a snapshot of like right now. You know, let's say four months ago, if I had four people in the trial and two active subscriptions and they all canceled, well, that that's not showing up here. This is just the current snapshot. And then here's a list of customers. Speaking of those customers, I'm going to show you charts in a second, but because I'm so early, like I just installed Revenue Cat in July, so I don't have a ton of data and I don't have like a ton of subscriptions. So my charts aren't interesting. I'll still talk about them and show them to you real quick, but I'm excited to grow and build this business. So my charts do become interesting and we can dive into those in future updates. But for now, let's talk about customers. So like I said, I have three total customers, two of them in the, in the free trial. One of them is the active subscriber, which is me and they have generated $70 in revenue. Now, of those two active trials, you can see, and this is what I like Revenue Cat. I can see like all this information very cleanly, very nice. And like I said in the last video, Revenue Cat has partnered with me on this series to give the updates, but I am really loving their dashboard so far, specifically for stuff like this. You know, sure, I have two active trials. One of them's already canceled already, man. All right, I guess I still got hope for this person. So they're still on the trial, so let's click on them. Cool, they downloaded the app on September 14th. They started the trial right away. That's a positive sign. Actually, 12 minutes after they downloaded it, they started the trial. So, okay, that says something about my, my first time user experience, at least for this person. And I can see they were on the Mac, right? So I just talked about the iPhone downloads. Well, this person downloaded the Mac version, liked what they saw within the first 12 minutes and subscribed. Interesting story, I like that. That was on the 14th. They last opened the app uh, on the 17th. So, okay, maybe I need to get them opening the app a little more, but anyway, obviously small sample size, this is one person, but I like seeing this customer history and this story of the people who are actually willing to pay for the app. Because we talked about downloads, right? Like this 760, well one, it's irrelevant because it's mostly my viewers, but two, it's one thing to download a free app, back to the Revenue Cat dashboard, it's a whole other thing to say, hold up the face ID and say, yep, I'll pay $10 a month for this or I'll start the trial. Because $10 a month is, is a big ask for an app. Like how many apps are you paying $10 a month for on a subscription? If any, it's probably very few. So I understand this is a big ask. So I value anyone that is willing to even do the free trial. So like I said, I like seeing their story. So back to the customers. So, okay, so hopefully they stick around. I guess you'll have to find out next month and if I added any more. This one's me, by the way, the 70. You can see like all my whole history, but you know, I'm kind of irrelevant. I'm obviously not gonna put stock into that. But let's talk about charts real quick before we go. So again, my charts, not interesting, but I'm very excited for the day when I have enough data, enough customers for these to be even remotely interesting. But the one I can start looking at for now, even in my early stage, is this trial conversions. Like I said, I didn't install Revenue Cat until the end of July, but starting in July, you can see new customers, 72, new customers, how many of those converted to trials, how many of those converted to actual renewals, how many were abandoned, et cetera. So I like seeing this. My MRR, monthly recurring revenue, obviously this is a hugely important stat for a SaaS business. So $10 a month is gonna be the floor because I'm always gonna be subscribed to it. But hey, in August, we jumped up to $20 a month MRR. I, I know these charts aren't impressive, but like I said, this is just the very beginning because I haven't done any marketing, right? Aside from these videos, but this is all developers watching these videos. It's not like YouTubers. Once I get the iOS 16 big update done in October, which I'm gonna talk about later in the video, that's when I'm gonna start my marketing push. So hopefully in future updates, you're gonna see these charts look a, a little more impressive or at least start growing. And like I said before, I am perfectly fine 
growing creator view slowly. I had no intentions of launching and immediately getting a bunch of customers. I'm here for the long haul. I'm perfectly fine growing this slow and steady over time. And hopefully that is going to reflect in the charts in the future updates. And speaking of future updates, let's go back to the kitchen to talk about that. The first update to the product has to do with the Mac. And I brought Google Sign In to the Mac. I was waiting on this because the library I'm using for Google Sign In was iOS specific, but they had said they were you know, creating Mac support. It would be out in a few weeks. So I was waiting on that. That finally came in. So now you can get channel stats and goals on the Mac. That release was a few weeks ago and in between not much work had happened because I did a two week trip to Europe. I was building and launching my widgets course. I had a lot going on that Creator View was kind of put on the back burner, but I'm back to it. And just a few days ago, I launched the next release, which had a new widget, a stat widget, right? You can see your subscribers, you can see your overall channel stats. And at this time I brought on some help to help me out with some like low hanging fruit, basic UI stuff that I just wanted taken off my plate. The first work she did, as you can see here, was combining our Mac preferences view to something a little more streamlined. Same thing with combining these, you know, about privacy feedback that were individual screens. We streamlined those and made those more simple. So our sidebar was less cluttered. Now we just have this info view that you see here. That catches you up with new features since the last video, but I wanna talk about my next release because it's gonna be a big one. That's gonna be mid to late October, and that's my big iOS 16 release. And I'm holding off till mid to late October because that is when iPad OS 16 and Mac OS Ventura come out. And I am gonna bump my minimum target up to iOS 16, Mac OS Ventura, et cetera. As you saw earlier, I only have one paying customer and it's me, so I can do that. It'll make my life as a developer a lot easier. Those of you that may be working with SwiftUI, you know if you can set your minimum target to iOS 16, life's pretty good with SwiftUI. So that's why I'm waiting till mid-October because yeah, I could support lock screen widgets, all the new iOS 16 stuff on the phone, but for the iPad and the Mac, I still have to have that if available iOS 16, do all the new code, else do all the old code. And I'm like, you know what? I'll just, I don't have any customers. I'll just wait a couple weeks till they're all released and then push my big iOS 16 update out, which is gonna be very focused on widgets. There's so many possibilities for widgets in this app, right? I already have the goals widgets. I already have the stat overview widgets. I'm working on the schedule widget. There could be an income widget and all the new charts that I'm gonna build with Swift charts. There could be an overall dashboard widget. This could be like a YouTuber's widget dream. And you know, people download apps just for the widgets. So if I have an awesome suite of widgets for YouTubers, I think that can be another avenue to which people download Creator View. Of course, they're not all gonna convert to paying customers, but that's my job to convert a percentage of them to paid customers. But I'm hoping the widgets can be the, the Trojan horse, if you will, or at least one other avenue to get downloads. And the second big piece of the iOS 16 update is converting all the data visualizations, right? The, the bar charts, the line charts. I'm gonna get rid of the pie chart. We're gonna replace that with a different chart with the new Swift charts framework that came out. And because charts are very easy to create now with the Swift charts framework, I'm gonna add a lot more uh, data visualizations to go. So a whole bunch of widgets, all new charts, all new data visualizations. That is coming in the big iOS 16 update, probably towards the end of October. And of course, I'll update you on how that release went in the next video. But let's talk about Brittany, the help that I brought on. As always, when I need help with something, I put out a tweet. So I put this out, got a bunch of responses, but ultimately ended up landing uh, on working with Brittany and we worked out the deal. It's low hanging fruit UI work for a couple hours a week, right? This is not like a full-time job, not even a part-time job. Just give me a couple hours a week, help me out with some easy UI stuff in exchange for mentorship, code review, experience in a code base, experience working with you know, GitHub, submitting a pull request, getting your code reviewed, changing that, merging, all that stuff. And of course, I'm gonna help amplify her on Twitter and do everything I can to help her get that first iOS development job. And again, all that was in exchange for a couple hours a week of some basic UI work. And that's just the initial version of the deal. Once she starts doing more complex stuff, we'll work out an hourly rate, it'll turn into like a part-time job. And then maybe, hopefully, if she does well, she can end up being Creative View's first full-time employee in due time. We're starting with a small commitment and we'll see how it goes. But that's where Creator View stands as of now, getting ready for the big iOS 16 push. And after that push, I will start marketing efforts. We'll talk about that in the next update.